Let's look ahead now to next 12 mm. months. What are you hoping to do? Okay, a few things. So it's going to be a very busy uh, 12 months coming up. So we've got the Eastern Area Plan, um, public inquiry, which starts shortly. Uh, I'm very concerned about the approach that the Cabinet Office are taking. Uh, Can you elaborate? Sure. So um, as we all know, the population has been pretty flat over the last few years. The last census in 2016 actually showed uh, a decrease in the population. Um, so therefore, it's very surprising that the Cabinet Office is... Um, effectively modelling the requirement, the need for housing at pre-2016 census levels, so a much higher figure than actually is what we need at the moment. Chris Thomas who disagrees with you. He does disagree with me, but his figures, his Cabinet Office figures, they, they freely admit that we're currently tracking more than 6,000 people um, below the projections for 2026. How does that even <coughs> come about? That well, they actually admit that it's, the data's wrong? Well, you can't, you can't disagree with the facts. <coughs> so the 2016 census yeah. shows, and, and we're conducting more up-to-date um, data analysis, shows that our population has not grown anything like what it was expected to do. Sure. So it just does not make sense to continue to plan for that inflated figure. So my strong view is that we must base our plans on reality and if we don't do that yeah. we will not see a change. So <coughs> less new house building, more use of brownfield sites wasn't it and that sort of thing? You so <coughs> we do need to grow and we do need to, to develop the island. What I'm uh, arguing is that we should do a much more sustainable way. We all see the empty sites in our towns. Douglas is particularly impacted and there's lots of sites which have lain empty for decades. Um, there's an enormous opportunity to develop those sites and that's, I think there's increasing consensus. It's something that I have been uh, championing for a while now in Timbalda and elsewhere, that urban regeneration could be incredibly powerful. And the other aspect of that is it changes the model, because the model at the moment is we build on Manx countryside, and it tends to be on the outskirts uh, of our towns, and all that does is create more traffic congestion, and more pollution, and more frustration, um, whilst at the same time, it hollows out the centre of our towns. Mm -hmm. So I um, absolutely will be continuing to, to challenge on that basis. So the, the Eastern, Area public, Eastern Area Plan public inquiry is a key aspect of that, but this doesn't just affect the East, mm -hmm. because the Cabinet Office is currently embarking on the Western Plan and the Northern Plan. So that's 83% of our population based on hopelessly optimistic statistics. Hopelessly optimistic. Well, they are. I mean, they, we know that there are over 6,000 uh, in excess of um, the original plan. So, um, so it, it just doesn't make sense. Well, this fighting talk, <coughs> and only quickly to go back to this, if you were minister, do you think you would be shut up from doing these sort of things? Because once you're inside the tent, you wouldn't be able to be so critical. Um, I don't believe that uh, I am being um, so critical. I think what I'm trying to do is bring an element of common sense and reality to mm. a number of important decisions. And uh, I think actually, I think that's quite beneficial to any any forum, whether yeah. that be in Tim or the Council of Ministers. Uh, and I think it's important that you have. Um, policies and approaches which are properly tested before you take them wider uh, and um, I'm not sure that's really happening. Anything else you kind of got on the horizon for the next 12 months you want well, to see done? <laughs> well we've talked about climate change emergency mm. I think it's very important that the health service we get some real traction in terms of the St Jonathan Michael report. Did you, uh, you pass? I mean you're yeah, actually, I, you, you, you I'm very, very very supportive of that yeah. but again it's just a report we now need to uh, effectively implement the recommendations and that's when people will see an improvement in the health service and that's critical to us all. So, so that's another... Are you optimistic that will take shape before we, that's it's year four? I thought it was an excellent report. Yeah, so but the report you just keep saying, but putting it, actually starting to implementing it. I think that effective implementation um, it's patchy across government, uh, and I see that in the capital program. You know, we look at the carry on we've got on the promenade at the moment. You know, it, you don't have to look too far for examples of where um, government is struggling to really deliver on, mm. on stuff on time, uh, which is which is helping people. So yeah, <coughs> you mean you've been critical of Mr. Harmer, you, oh, haven't you? A fair bit. You agree on that? Um, I wouldn't be singling out. No. Uh, okay. Uh, Ray Harmer. I mean, I think it's, a, it's an issue across 
across a number but of projects. So if you look at the NSC, uh, if you look at lots of uh, IT projects in, in the Cabinet Office of, of yeah. Ranley in Home Affairs, th there's no shortage of examples. Sure. But traffic management <coughs> is one of your things you're going about. Yeah. And I presume that means lower speed limits you want to see. Is that um, part I, of it? I, I am very keen that we uh, improve our ro road safety record. How? Um, so there's a number of different ways uh, that you can do that. Um, looking at um, the culture that we have uh, on, on our roads. Uh, so there are technology options as well, which we can, you know, we, we what is great is that um, across Europe, this is happening and people are starting to deploy different techniques to make our roads safer. So th there will not be one silver bullet in terms yeah. of improving our road safety. Speed limits will undoubtedly be one aspect. Would you like of to see that. 20 mile an hour limits through most towns and villages? Then? I think if you look at the uh, yes, is, is it the answer? And why, why do I do I welcome that? Because all the evidence shows that you are nine times more likely to, uh, as a pedestrian, to survive or not have a serious injury if the car is travelling at 20 miles an hour rather than 30 miles an hour. And that's why in Liverpool, in Bristol, large areas around us in Ireland as well, they have dropped the speed limit. And mm. it's generally welcomed by local residents. And local residents campaign for it. Mm. It's less welcomed by the motorist who wants to drive through those areas. It was quite an interesting uh, dynamic, I think, but uh, we should be looking to reduce the number of people who are killed and seriously injured on Manx roads. And that, that's, that's a very measurable target, and there's some very sensible policies which we can uh, deploy if there is a political will to do so, ah. which will drive that out. And you're going to push that away? Um, I will continue, continue to campaign to for for improvements in road right. safety. Should we have some scores on the doors? Sure. What did you do last year? Seven, wasn't it? Eight? I, I, think I, I think I uh, went for seven. seven. Yeah. How, how do you feel this year? Or how um, you, how's it going? I. It feels um, I probably dropped down a bit, to be honest. I probably uh, he heading, heading towards six. I would think. You know. Why? So Well, I think whilst I am. Um, making many um, sensible interventions. Um, what I think is not happening is I'm not seeing necessarily um, those being embraced by the Council of Ministers. Ah. So I think... Uh, Do you so want to be in that room, don't well, you? Well, no. I, well, I want, I'm not, for me, it's not about being in that room. It's about... Making a change, though. It's you about do it if you're in that room. It's about seeing more sensible and positive outcomes. Okay. Well, uh, and if I was in that room, I think I could help do that. By that very nature um, of the thing, do you think that's your colleague, and he is your colleague, technically Howard, will be going, oh, he's going to be trouble. Don't, don't want him um, in there. There's others that are, will be much more uh, compliant. Could, well, it, could it go against you, this? I think, you, I think you get a better outcome if you mm. have a range of Challenge people. If you've got a whole bunch of, of uh, very compliant people, mm -hmm. well, then actually I'm not sure you get a high quality outcome. Okay, now you gave the government six. Uh, yeah. And you know, I think that's been six all the way along almost, I think. But uh, how did you feel the last 12 months? I think it's, it's probably still around the sixish level. You know, as I say. Is it, it a higher six or lower? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just a, literally. In they have made an impression on you. Yeah, in some Six ways. Is low, isn't it? I mean, yeah, I think I'm, 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 what I'm still saying is this well, we've got a policy, we've got a strategy. That on itself does not change anything. Yeah. So, what I'm not seeing is that effective uh, improvement and delivery in terms of public service. And when that happens, I will be delighted to increase uh, my ratings.